Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about Antenna Tracker again, and it's an Antenna Tracker for none other than the DJI Digital FPV system. If you remember, some time ago I posted a video on this Antenna Tracker. It's an RSI based tracker, and somehow I managed to hook it up to the DJI Digital FPV goggles, and was able to get it to track my drone, which is having a DJI Digital FPV Air unit. And it was able to track quite decently with no problems at all. But the problem is, it's just too big and a lot of us wanted a head mounted antenna tracker. One that's small enough so that you do not have to carry this big bulky case to the field. I also understand that a lot of us are using the Crystal or the AX2 HD directional antennas together with two Omni directional antennas on our DJI FPV goggles and that's perfectly fine but it's not giving you that perfect range and also these are directional antenna which means that you have to turn your head to where your drone is in order to get the best results for your FPV experience. So what I'm going to do in this video is to string everything that you see here to make it small enough to be mounted on the DJI digital FPV system. Now in order to string the size of the antenna tracker, we will be using surface mount components and this is the new PCB that I came up with. Now these are the components that we will be using for the tracker board. There are a couple of potentiometers, step down regulator, capacitors, diode, resistors, ICs and an off switch. As we all know, this is an RSI based antenna tracker, so we will need to have two receivers to pick up the differential RSI in order to turn the antenna tracker left and right. Instead of using two separate receivers, I'm using this quantum diversity receiver which has two modules inside. The RSI input wires from the tracker board should be soldered to pin number 6 of the receiver modules on the receiver like so. Next, we solder these two wires to supply power to the receiver and the wires will go through this hole here. To tap 12 volts for the receiver, we solder the ends of those two wires to the negative and positive of the regulator here. Now we're using a 9 gram servo that's modified to turn 360 and I've printed a 3D mount for it as well. After the servo is secured to the 3D printer mount, the whole attachment is now installed to the tracker board using two long screws and nuts. If you look over here, there's a slot in the 3D printer mount and that is to allow fine adjustment of the position of the servo. Where you want the servo to be positioned will depend on the profile of the wheel that you are using. Here I'm using the Mini 4WD low profile wheel and it has a diameter of 21mm. The wheel gets secured to the servo's horn using a long screw and the screw has bearings, like so. More about these bearings later, I'll explain what they are for. Alright, at this stage I have soldered the standard servo wires which are the ground, positive and signal to the servo connection tabs here on the tracker board, I have also soldered the servo direction control wire which goes to where the middle leg of the servo's potentiometer used to be. So inside every servo there's this potentiometer and we have removed that potentiometer from this servo. And this end of the wire goes to where the middle leg used to be on the PCB inside. Finally, the electrical components and wirings are done up on the tracker board and this is how it looks like. We have a 3S LiPo pack connected to the tracker board using the JST plug there and the front view sorry the top view of the tracker board looks like this we have the power on switch and we have this Hobby King Quantum 5.8 GHz diversity receiver you could use any 5.8 GHz receiver that has um, two receiver modules inside for you to hook up the RSI wires to them
Oh, that was a quick test. I haven't adjusted the potential meter to fine tune the RSI balance yet, but it seems to work quite well. But once we put on the directional antennas that are for picking up the left and right signals coming in, we will definitely have to trim the potential meters here, this one and this one. The choice of antenna will be a small and powerful directional antenna such as the TBS 5.8 GHz patch. It's quite expensive to find a TBS patch on GetFPV, so instead I've got myself the Manus Invader and it's basically the same as the TBS patch except that it has a bigger PCB. So I just cut it down and it's now the same size as a TBS patch antenna, which is 3.5 cm by 3.5 cm. Here we have two cut down Manus Invader patches installed and I'm using this type of adapters to mount them to the receiver. As you can see, they are perfectly 90 degrees apart, which is good for picking up the signal differential. I also 3D printed this holder, which will hold the four antennas that are connected to the DJI goggles. Here I've installed only one SMA port, but eventually I will have four SMA ports here, and that will allow me to hook up four patches for the DJI goggles. The patches will connect to the DJI goggles via the coaxial cable. It's not yet soldered at the moment. And this coaxial will run through the holes here. And this is the other end that we will plug into our DJI goggles antenna port. Now we have all four SMA connectors soldered to the RG174 cables. And boom, here are the four patches installed and they look lovely. At this stage, the turntable is almost done except for the wheels. And here are some 3D printed parts with rollers in them to add as wheels for the turntable. These rollers are the plastic ones with rubber trimming. And these rollers are used in Tamiya Mini 4WD cars like this one here. The wheels will be installed to the base of the turntable. We already have this driver wheel here. And now we only need to mount the two free rolling wheels like so. I'm going to use double-sided 3M tape to secure them in place and that should balance the turntable. At this stage, I'm happy that the tracker board is more than halfway completed. It has the turntable which is also a tracker board, the receiver modules for picking up the left and right signals, and a bunch of antennas to hook up to the DJI FPV goggles. Now we need to attach the whole thing to a tracker base and this is the 3D printed tracker base which I designed. It will snap right onto the metal hook of the DJI goggles. And to secure it in place, we can attach a velcro strap through this slot here, past that metal hook, and it's not going anywhere once it's secure. At the center, we have this aluminum hub, which will hold the pivot. The pivot consists of a 4mm screw and 10mm outer diameter bearings, which will fit right into the hole of the aluminum hub. And here's a close-up of these one-way bearings on both sides. The bearing will turn in this direction and not the other. These are idle rollers that will stop the turntable from rotating past this point. Once the drive wheel comes in contact with the one-way bearing, it's going to idle and roll on the spot. This way we could prevent the turntable from turning round and round and causing a mess of the or tangle of these coaxial cables. For the same reason, these coaxial cables are going through this slot. And since it's not going to turn past 180 degrees, the slot will end here. Alright, we've mounted the turntable onto the tracker base and this is how it looks like at the moment. I've added the DC plug for supplying power to the entire unit. And if you notice here, the wires have enough slack so they do not bind up. Everything should turn freely like so, with no binding of wires or anything like that. Now there's only one final touch that we need to do to finish up the antenna tracker and that is to install this 3D printed travel stop. As soon as this wheel comes into contact with the one-way bearing on the tracker base, it's going to turn on the spot but due to the momentum, the wheel will overshoot this point and hence we need the travel stop here to prevent that from happening. 
And this bearing here really is to prevent any wear and tear on the plastic. Finally, the antenna tracker is mounted on the DJI goggles, as you can see here. I'm using just two zip ties instead of a Velcro strap, since the zip ties are cheap and they are more secure than using a Velcro strap. And to support the CG, there's a stand here that's made of stainless steel wire and it fits right into this pivot here, which I've created as part of the design. And there's no binding of the wires. These coaxial wires are now plugged into the goggles. And likewise for the power supply cable, which goes to the battery. And the good thing about this design is it allows airflow. There's nothing blocking the air vents. All right, enough talking. Let's test this and see if it works. Okay, for the first flight, I'm using the stock DJI antennas and we're going to fly this flight route. I've set the frequency of the pickup receiver to 5880 and that matches the frequency of the drone here. Alright, here comes the second flight.
As you can see from the FPV footages, the antenna tracker is working really well and the video quality outperforms that of the Omni antennas. I'm really happy with this build and thank you so much for staying till this part of the video. That's all I have and I will see you next time.